Hello and welcome. Today we'll be talking about how to write up a scientific paper or what, what areas to cover for when you're writing your medical paper once you've done the study. The idea is at the time when you are coming to write your scientific paper, you have written a proposal. It has gone through ethical committee or institutional review board. You have collected the data, analyzed it, and you are now ready to write it. So it applies to any clinical research, any manuscript paper or grant uh, or thesis if you're writing it. So very quickly, uh, we'll go through some of these points you need to. Before you start writing, a few things to take care of it. You have to have a journal in mind, which medical journal you'll be submitting this paper or this manuscript. Go out in the journal uh, once you identified and your mentors or uh, your principal investigator or anybody who's guiding you through this process, they can suggest you a few journals. You can go to, uh, uh, to one of the journals and find out what is their requirement. <coughs> Excuse me. Ideas to define your study type uh, and write in skeleton first. Skeleton is like just the subheadings of the manuscript, including your title page and abstract and then background and math words and results and so on and so forth. Make sure when you're reading your references, especially in your background section, in your discussion sections, so you are writing down these pertinent references, it'll be very handy when you cite them. Write down your tables as soon as you get results. That is the way to build up your results uh, as you go along. And very importantly, avoid plagiarism, uh, violations or ethics. That means you cannot copy paste somebody's work as it is. You cannot copy paste even your own publications, uh, prior published publications as well. So absolutely no, no, uh, they, most of the journals have these softwares. They can pick it up and they'll reject it right away and then they may bar you in submitting anything uh, to their journal again. So please be careful about the pleasures and, and the further violations. The strobe statement that stands for strengthening the report of observational studies in epidemiology. The reason I'm bringing it up here because most of the time you will be involved in observational studies. It's in randomized control trial and all as they take time, require money, and then it requires a few years of planning, you may not be involved or this not be the first time you'll be writing your paper directly on randomized control trial. So as we've talked about cohort studies, retrospective prospective cohort studies, case control studies, cross-sectional studies, and conference abstract, they, the same principle apply for abstract, the short form of manuscript you're writing in. So strobe statement is important. I'm going to, there's a link on this, uh, this uh, slide. You can uh, go and download it. There are the, the, uh, multiple checklists based on what kind of study you are looking into. And then I'll show you one of the tools that you can find all these checklists as well. Once you go to this website, it has a clear checklist sort of right there, which I've, uh, we have posted it for you here. You can go and look into that, what to write in the title and abstract slide. You will see, you know, indicative slide design, common use terms, so on and so forth. Same thing for introduction method and so on, background piece of it, method study design and participants. If it's a cohort study, what you want to write down? It's a case control study, what you want to write down? And you can come back and read these things. Same thing for uh, 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 cross section studies and so on and so forth. In next slides, talk about how to define your variables when you're in the method sections. What was your data user, uh, data source? different biases, study size. So you can use these things in your proposal as well as your manuscript. If you start answering questions, you can easily fill up your manuscript by initial few pages right there. Remember, these are for different types. So if you're doing a cohort study, apply these things. If you're using the case control study, apply some of these things. And if you're using a cross section study, you can apply these things. So not all things are applied to each publications but take what study design you have in mind or what you have actually done it, and then take and pick and choose your uh, check. Coming to the results sections, uh, you report uh, your uh, each stage of the study, you know, how many patients were eligible, how many patients meet the criteria, how many you include them in the study, how many loss of the follow-up, analyze and so on and so forth. You want to put some descriptive data around it and then outcome data based on what your study design is, it's a cohort study or cross-session study and then put down your main results as an unadjusted or UD varied analysis. Then put down uh, uh, your multi-varied analysis as well if you've done after adjusting for the variables which are, which are significantly different in each group, your cases and control. And any analysis you have done for them that you want to mention about it as well. The discussion, we have a separate video on it, very short three minute video to answer those five questions. Uh, and then I'll just repeat it. You, your first paragraph of the discussion should be, what is the main summary of your results? No, uh, no numerical value, just the summary in the first paragraph. Second paragraph, you want to write down 
comparing your results to the existing literature. So you are evaluating against or uh, in favor that this is what you're publishing. So you compare your top three or four results and then you talk about from different literature. That's where you cite other articles that who have done similar studies or studies against uh, in your results. Then fourth paragraph or fifth paragraph, you talk about your strength of your studies, five to seven strength based on what the study design is, how robust your data is, how many centers data you have it, how big the data then your limitation sections or your weaknesses when you talk about the study design limitations, data limitations, or anything which you could not find out in your study, which you did not study for that purpose. And the last part in discussion is your um, summary statement, which is summary part, which is conclusion, which is nothing but the paraphrasing your first paragraph of, this, uh, of discussion. You only uh, write down uh, the interpretation of your studies. If you have not studied something, you can't men mention those things, especially with the costs associated with or not. Sometimes people say, we did this, it should be helpful in cost saving. If you have not studied that, don't mention it. Don't say that bigger, larger studies are needed uh, to, to, uh, to verify these results. Of course, these are needed. You, you should not just stay away from saying that. Uh, definitely mention about the generalizability of the study. If it is uh, validated, it could be externally validated or you require external validation because you've done single center study. Mention about the funding in the end, if a study was funded by something or uh, uh, there's any conflict of interest, you have it in the end section. So just to bring it up, uh, this was just observation studies for randomized control trial, Strobe statement for observation studies, then PRISMA is for systematic reviews and STARD is for diagnostic accuracy. That's a website. So I think there should be a website right there. It's called, if you go to Equator Network right here in the bottom, it should give you all the checklists for each different type of study. You can click it, you can download the Word file, keep it with you, and start writing your uh, manuscript uh, uh, one by one. Let's go into a little bit more detail as we talk about what we talk about when it is a title page. So title page is your first page of your manuscript. You write down what is the title of your article author information, each author listed there with their first, last name and their medical degree or any other degree. And sometimes most of the journals are asking for ORCID ID, which is Open Researcher and Contributor Identification. Uh, so you can, you can tie that uh, with each author and then it could be directly linked with that. Any disclaimers about if they're a conflict of interest or anybody who has helped you out, especially support if you got any small grant within the institution or outside. You want to write down the word count from your main body of it, not counting abstract main body from background till your before reference sections. Number of figures and tables you want to put down and conflict of interest declaration if you have any conflict as well. Even though it's called title page, it should be done within one page. If not, it could be one one half page. You want to start abstract on a fresh page. So that's one thing that's why you want to finish everything in one page. That's why it's called title page. Now coming back to abstract, we have talked about it, how to write it. It has the same title say four major if you think of its background method results and conclusion sometime you want to add purpose as well based on the each journal's requirement uh, and sometime you want to enter the clinical trial registration number which is required for randomized control trials or some of the large scale studies which can you can add them in your title page as well okay this has to be formatted specifically for different journals because they ask in different way. That's the way once you submit it, you get rejected. You can reformat the first page or the abstract page and then you can submit the rest as it is. Uh, that's why it's very important to make sure that you are, uh, you are paying attention to e-journals formatting. Match with the content of the main document is very important because your results should say what your result is a summary of your whole paper. So there should not be any discrepancies in numbers. In, in abstract, uh, I mean to say abstract, in abstract, you only write the highlight of your results. So you pick up your top two or three results and write down, but make sure you expand them well into your main body of the paper. Coming back to your introduction or background section, it's very important. We have a separate uh, literature on it, separate uh, recording on it. It says you have to answer these four questions in background. Question number one, why bother? Why it is important about that field, either in number of death or life uh, it's costing, or how much money it is uh, costing to the healthcare system in the country or in the world. First question, why bother? Second question you need to answer is, what is already known in the field? What is already known, the area you're looking into? Third, you wanna define what is a knowledge gap? Like they might have looked into certain areas, but they have missed out the part you are studying and you wanna write down that piece. And fourth thing you want to say, what is the purpose of the study? That means you're justifying 
what you want to do or what you have done to fill that knowledge gap. So why bother? What is already known in the field? What is the knowledge gap? Things have studied, but they might not be studied uh, in the area you're looking into. And this is exactly what you're doing to fill this knowledge gap. And that's a four question you need to answer in production. Nothing more, nothing less. And you only cite pertinent references, which helps with your story or with the storytelling in the background or introduction section. Methods, important. Make sure that you write down what you did. Make sure you have a sentence about ethical committee or IRB approval, if it is waived or the number of that thing. Make sure you talk about the selection of participants. Use the PICO style, P-I-C-O, P is for patient population, I is for your intervention group, C is your control group, and O is your outcome, how you define your outcomes. Talk about technical information, how you get the data, who collected the data, how you verify the data, if there's a, any kappa value between two people, what the statistics you apply onto it. So you have to have a good statistics section in the end, last section of your method section where you write down what statistics you apply, what kind of data you're describing as you go forward. You have to provide enough detail that reading your statistical section, people can reproduce the result in any part of the world. And that's going to be very, very important. And include information at the time you're planning the proposal, not that what you came through later on uh, as you move forward. Coming back to your result section, this is easy because as soon as you get your data from the, uh, data scientist or the statistician, you should be able to get your table ready. You should write down the important points from the table as a text message, put down a table and figures, make sure that you're covering your primary and secondary outcomes. And there is an appendix section. If any results you have done, which is not part of your main, main IRB, main uh, manuscript, you can put them in appendix uh, as addendum one, A, B, or appendix one or two as well. Do not duplicate data in graphs and tables. Sometimes I've seen people, they put down the table and then they put the same graph as well. Your data has to be exclusive, uh, especially don't put everything in text message and then put table and then figure on top of it. Don't, this is overkill. You only want to put the graphs and images which enhances your results, not just a duplication of your data from your table or from your text, uh, from your text what you're writing. Discussion, we have talked about it at length. We have already have a, uh, another recording on it. Please go and watch that one. They were saying, you know, you have to have these five or six areas. Summarize your main finding. Two, put down uh, the, the, uh, the literature uh, in favor or against your main finding in this paragraph number two and three, four. Then your strength, then your limitations, and then you put down as a conclusion as you're paraphrasing of the first paragraph as well. Make sure that you tie your goals of the study in the beginning to your conclusion section. That is going to be very important because most of the time as a reviewer, that's what I would look for that how well they tied their results in conclusion section, in discussion, back to their goals as well. Uh, you can always mention about that. It could be a statistically significant, but might not be clinically. Let's say you found a difference of blood pressure of 79 versus 81, and then you have thousands of patients. These two unit difference could be statistically significant because you have a large number of patients and is very, very high, but clinically it might not be that big of a deal. So please be humble about it. And we can talk about that even the results are statistically significant, but the clinical significance is up for debate. And that, that's where you show you're aware of it that you know the results might be coming just sheer of number of your number of high number of uh, uh, patient population you're seeing. Uh, as I mentioned already that avoid making statements of uh, cost and economic benefit unless you have studied about it and you have data within your paper. Otherwise, just stay away from that. Please uh, avoid uh, claiming any work you have not done. If you're proposing something, you're working on something, just say, don't say that it will be looked into uh, some of those things. If there are new hypotheses coming up from your publications, write down, but label them properly that, hey, this could be hypothesis thought provoking and then somebody should look into it or the further studies could be uh, are desired on these, these, these areas. That is perfectly okay to do so as far as you label them uh, properly. References, very important. I think use one of the reference libraries. It could be EndNote library or anything else you would use it. Put direct references whenever possible. Just don't refer one article which has referred all these things as well. Go to the direct source and try to look for Usually you want to look for more recent articles as they are putting into references because there's a new information. But if you're defining a definition or something which has defined in the past, you want to go to the original article to, uh, to, to refer into it. 
uh, stay away from review articles because that is uh, that is a poor way of referencing things. Uh, do not reference abstract and personal communication. Sometimes if there's nothing available, you can uh, refer abstract. For personal communication, opinion articles, stay away from those things. Check your references. Make sure they are they are they are solid. There is a reference ID. There's a PubMed ID on them, and then they are part of your uh, EndNote library. Make sure the numbers are cons consecutive, and then if you use a software, it takes care of it automatically. So I strongly advise you to use the software so there's there's no mismatch in numberings as well. And please do standard formatting, which is also taken care of uh, if you're using a EndNote library or some any reference library for that. Tables and figures. Uh, I think follow instructions from journal. That is the best part of doing it. Number them consecutively. They could not be mismatched as well. They should be easy to understand. Keep the font size to decent 12 font size. And they should be heading on each column and each table has to have a heading as well. Just don't put an uh, without heading table anywhere in the paper. And make sure that you specify statistical measures or variations as a footnote in that table or on the side as well when you write down your p-values or anything for that. Figures, same comments, follow the journal instructions, make sure they are clear, good uh, resolution size. They should be self explanatory and then they should also be with the legend as well that they have figure one and what this figure one denotes for it. Make sure you enter in your text body that please insert table one here in a, in a parenthesis and figure one here in parenthesis and list all your table and figures in the end of the manuscript at the, in the bottom after references. Sometimes most journal ask you to submit them separately as a JPEG file or any other file for that matter. So you wanna keep them separately outside your main body of uh, your manuscript anyways. In the end, uh, miscellaneous, please specify unit of measurement. Uh, they could be US way, or United States way of measurements or international. Uh, please uh, uh, avoid abbreviations, at least for the first time you should use a full, full word and, or anything else and then use abbreviation afterwards. Only use a common abbreviation. Don't make up new abbreviation in the article if you have, they have not been made before. Uh, cover letter is going to be important, so be pay attention to it. You have to write a cover letter on top of everything else and submit it separately. Make sure your conflict of interest statement is complete. And make sure it is uh, it is uh, it is signed or written by all co-authors. There are online way of doing it as well. You have content information of uh, either primary author or corresponding author as well. Suggest reviewers. Be ready to suggest up to three to five reviewers. That they should not be your friends or family. They should be somebody independent or some mostly an expert from those areas. And sometimes they say that you don't want some of the reviewers to be there. So you can actually bar some of them saying, hey, don't send it to this person because you know that they might be working on, <coughs> excuse me, competing interest or they might be working on similar things and you want to put them as a uh, reviewer. So you want to list them as a non reviewer. There's a pre-submission checklist on most of these journals, so you can go and print it out and check, 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 doing it. That makes your life easy. Submission process can take few hours and few days for people to sign everything else. So make sure, few more hours, three to four hours, uh, if you're doing for the first time, make sure you follow the checklist properly so it doesn't get rejected same night or next day and all of your work put into it is it's gone bad. And make sure there's some permission to reproduce published materials. You don't have a choice, you should check it and saying that these, results are being published. Uh, you, they can reproduce these results uh, as well. And sometimes they ask you to share data based on your capabilities, institutional policies, follow them, either check it or say that your data is not available for them. So uh, you're done now, but sometimes it comes back for revision or most of the time it's gonna come back for revision. At the time in revision, we're gonna record a separate video, how to address revision or how to make sure that you are being diligent in revision. And I'll show you a template in the next video. Um, idea is you want to address each point how critique how critiquing that point is you want to address it be thankful thank you thanks and then explain keep trying you want to fix it if they're asking you to change few things there which is you can do is easy to do so make sure you do it and make sure that you keep trying it will, might come back for revision another one i remember that a couple of my papers came for seven revisions just have to have patience whoever have a more patience either you or reviewer you'll win as far as you're doing a decent job, taking care of their points and making sure that you're, you know, you're taking all those lacunas away. This peer review is very important. It's time consuming, uh, but uh, that's a game you have to play. So make sure that you are uh, being attentive, making sure that you're addressing each point, changing your, uh, editing your manuscript, keep them in track changes more. And then we'll talk about in the next video, how to uh, ace your revision process. If the reviewer does not understand your work, uh, onus is on you to 
communicate them better that you know what you're trying to do is you can try different ways and telling them and then making sure that you're listening to their side many of the time these reviewers are excellent and they're expert in their field and if they're bringing a point then you have to think back and saying maybe if that might be true and see how you can go back and fix it sometimes you have to do uh, uh, additional analysis and if it is possible i would suggest doing it rather than not doing it and getting rejected and then resubmitting a different journal and might go to the same reviewers later on again so just pay attention to that as well so with that uh, we are done with the how to write a manuscript i know it's went quickly do watch it subscribe and like our channel and then uh, that's the only way you will find out that how when we upload some of these uh, new uh, uh, new videos for you to watch it uh, thank you so much for watching